Welcome to Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're on a sunny Sunday. We've got college gymnastics. Western Michigan on its senior day looks for a victory against the visiting Kent State Golden Flashes. Happy to have you back inside University Arena alongside former NIU gymnast Emily Graham. Evan Stockton with you. Emily, you know from your senior day, there are so many emotions going through you. Western Michigan, a special day for them, and it's a special day as well for Kent State. Their senior, Jade Brown, who has been great the last few years in the MAC, gets one more opportunity to perform. Absolutely. Jade Brown is an absolute stud on the floor. She got first place in the MAC championships last year, 2019. So I know going through this year, she was probably looking forward to continuing nailing her floor streak. So I can't wait to see what she does today and going into MAC championships in a couple of weeks. The alum of Waverly High in Lansing, just down the road from us here in Kalamazoo, has the chance to perform in her home state. And on the other side for Western Michigan, Amelia Moeller, the native of the greater Chicagoland area. It's her senior day. What do you think is going through her mind right now? I mean, she's probably so excited. I know as a senior, you're really just really proud of what you've done the past four years. You're really reflecting on what great work you've done. So Coach Penny, I think, said it best when she said Amelia is one of the hardest workers I've ever coached. She is going to go out there today and just continue to do what she does best. Emily and I, happy to be here on a sunny Sunday afternoon in Kalamazoo. Mac Gymnastics coming up in just a moment. Getting ready for our first of four rotations between Kent State and Western Michigan today. On a sunny Sunday outside, Emily, we're finally getting closer to spring. It's in the mid-50s. What a drive it was in today. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's one of those great warm days we look forward to in the Midwest here. you got to enjoy them when you get them. Bryce Biggin, the head coach for Kent State, he's been here for quite a long time. Three decades plus as the head coach of Kent State's gymnastics team. It's his 42nd year in the program. Emily, I think maybe this is an easy question to ask or answer, but what's it like having someone with so much familiarity in a program? What success can that bring? I mean, you talk about just knowing how to manage a team, knowing how to put lineups together, knowing what talent you have as a part of your team. It's really important as you go through each event, knowing what girls can bring to the table and knowing what lineups are going to bring you success in the future. And if you follow Western Michigan gymnastics, you know about Penny Jernigan Jer Jer in the midst of her seventh year as Western Michigan's head coach. Emily, you know her. She came over to the table. She recruited you once upon a time. <laughs> Unfortunately, for her sake, you went to DeKalb and NIU. Yes. But what do you remember from your interactions with Coach Jernigan? She is just so sweet. She's such a positive person. She really does love this team and she loves her girls and she loves the sport of gymnastics and you can tell that in the way that she coaches her team. First up in the vault for Western Michigan, Amanda Gruber. And would you take a look at that? The first vault up for their lineup and it was a stick and that was a Yurchenko full twist which is an extremely hard vault to do and for her to stick it, that's exactly how you want to meet to start. The five foot two freshman who grew up just outside of Chicago in Riverside. A strong start for Western Michigan. Absolutely. We switch over to the bars. Here's Sammy Nero for Kent State, the senior from Bain Bainbridge, Ohio. That was a beautiful Jaeger. A little short on the hands in there on her bail. But gearing up for the dismount here, it's been a great routine. Great handstand. A great routine, didn't quite stick the landing there, but to have, like I said before, the first girl in your lineup to hit a routine really starts the momentum off strong, really gets your team psyched up for the rest of the lineup. Great routine for Kent State. Both teams with strong starts. Up next for Western Michigan, Morgan Spence, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. She's been an all-arounder in the last five meets for Western Michigan. She will also be an all-around participant today. In a moment like this, Emily, what's going through your mind? <laughs> Normally, you're just trying to focus and visualize on what you're about to do. The more you visualize, the more you can feel confident in your ability and more you can feel confident in the vault that you're about to do. One deep breath here, and then we'll get going.
A beautiful Yurchenko layout. A little bit pikey in the hips, so the judges are going to need to duck there for not having a fully straight body. But she landed straight up and down. Her chest was up, and she only had to take one step on the landing. Great. That was a great fault. You can see she's excited there, clapping, smiling. Another great vault. I have to imagine after you go, Emily, obviously with your experience, there is kind of that relief that washes over you, right, when you're done? Exactly. The second you smile and present to the judge, you feel so much better. You feel relieved. And especially after you nail it, you know, all right, I can take a deep breath and I can start thinking about what I have to do next. It's like when you finally got done with the final in high school. <laughs> Just the relief washes over yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Turn in that piece of paper and you're done. Remember in college gymnastics, six go in each event for each team, and you count the top five scores. Here's Madison Trott, a five foot five sophomore from New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. That was a great combination there. She had a Jaeger to a Bale. That's a couple extra tenths of bonus when you connect those two skills. Big dismount here, a double layout. Almost a stick. She had a little bit of a step back there. But obviously, she's excited she hit that routine. And of course, on bars, for an event that is prone to falls, um, it's great to have the second girl in your lineup, the third. I mean, you want to go for a full lineup of sticks. But to continue that stick progression is awesome. Madison has only competed on the bars this year. That was her eighth time on the bars. And you can see why. She looks very consistent. Now that is such a unique fall in the fact that she does a half twist onto the table. Normally you see gymnasts do just a straight body flip flop onto the table, but she actually does a half twist making the vault a little harder for herself. You'll see it here, twists forward onto the table and then does a, another half twist off. Great vault. Charlotte, the 5'7 freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. Grant a Red Mountain High out west in Arizona. She's been an all-arounder all year long, and she once again will compete in the all-around today, along with Morgan Spencer, just went before. Exactly. Charlotte is actually ranked 68th in the nation in all-around, and that's pretty incredible when you think about how many girls compete all-around throughout the NCAA. It's amazing to think she's ranked 68th. Olivia Amade is about to go for Kent State. Next up on the bars, Stacy Harrison will go in the vaults in just a few minutes for Western Michigan. Olivia next up for Kent State, a five foot two freshman from here in the Minton State. She's from Detroit, went to Chippewa Valley High, which is in the Metro Detroit area. State champs in football a couple of years ago. Olivia's been an all arounder for Kent State all year long and she'll do it again today. So is this moment of waiting, you really have to continue focusing on what your routine's gonna look like. Sometimes it's a bit nerve wracking, just kind of waiting to see what the judges are thinking for the routine beforehand. How would you calm your nerves in a spot like this, Emily? You know, normally I would just take a lot of deep breaths and pray. <laughs> <Ha>. <laughs> Mostly pray for, you know, safety and the confidence to get through that routine, so. As the judges are meticulously crafting their scores. Emily, I have to say, too, I love the song choice right now. Jack and Diane in the background. <laughs> John Mellencamp, fantastic. Big country fan, huh? Yes. Emily and I were chatting before the broadcast about our uh, favorite music choices. You may not uh, know it when first looking at Emily, <laughs> but she's a huge rap fan. I am, yes. Drake and Migos are my jam. As the waiting continues, Crowd here in the background in Kalamazoo pumping up the Broncos on their senior day. Emily, before your senior day last year for NIU, what was going through your mind the night before, the day of? You know, like I said in the open here, it's just a great meet to kind of reflect on how much work you've put in the past couple years and how proud of you are of all of your accomplishments. So it really is just a time of thankfulness and just being proud of yourself for making it through all four years of a college sport. Oh, a fall there on a Tkachev. I know that's probably not what she wanted, especially being third in the bar lineup. Um, you definitely want a solid routine. Just seems like her hands didn't quite catch over the bar. She kind of caught at the bar, making them slip straight down. So 
She's going to have to take a deep breath here and re-gear. What would you think about in a moment like this when it's happened to you? You know, at a moment like this, what you're really thinking about is not giving away any more tents. So you've already given away five tents with the fall, so you especially want to finish this routine with the least amount of deductions possible because let's say you have another fall in the lineup, you know, you still want your score to be as high as possible to be able to count towards that team score. So here she just needs to remain clean for the rest of the routine. Beautiful handstand. Line full right into a double back and a stick. So she did accomplish that, trying to make it clean throughout the rest of the routine. She stuck the dismount. She had a beautiful blind full. So that's a couple extra bonus points there. I know probably not the routine she wants, being third in the lineup. Now the next three girls really need to hit to make sure that they don't have to count that fall. A great Yurchenko layout full. Kind of a big step backwards. She was a little over-rotated there, so the judges might take one to two tenths, but overall, great height, great body position. Stacy, the five foot three junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, had a 9.75 on the ball at Central Michigan last Friday. That's the last time Western Michigan competed. We'll see Stacy later on today. She'll be on the bars and on the floor as well for Western Michigan. Here comes Rachel Dekovich for Kent State. Bigger part in Madison Ayanuzo next up on the bars. Madison in the midst of the waiting game once again. Sophomore from Carmel High School in the greater Indianapolis area. She's only competed on the bars this year. It's a great feeling to know that you have specialized and honed in on one event. Knowing that that's your specialty and knowing that you can go into an event just having one job to accomplish, it really is a fun position to be in. You just saw the score for Stacey Harrison, a 9.75. Something tells me that might have been the routine before the fall. A great Takachev there. Now the Golden Flashes are especially looking for a hit routine here after that fall. She just had a great couple of handstands in a row. Here she goes gearing up for the dismount. A double layout. A hot backward on the landing, but overall, that's exactly what the Golden Flashes needed. After a fall, you really need to shake it off, get on to the next routine, and make sure that it's a hit to continue building up that team score. So after the strong performance for Madison, we flip to the freshman, Josephine Thomas, for Western Michigan. That was an outstanding Yurchenko layout pull. You see her excitement there, and that is truly well-deserved excitement. She had a huge pop off the table, a great layout body position. You'll see it here. Her body is totally straightened out. No pike in the hips. There it is, beautiful. And then almost no deduction on the landing, a slight hop. That was a fantastic vault. Josephine sees in high in the vault. Came against Ball State back on February 9th, a 9.85. She's going to come close to that today, Emily. Uh, absolutely. That was almost a flawless ball, I would say. Now, because it is a Yurchenko full, it does not start from a 10-0 start value. She doesn't quite have the amount of difficulty to have her start from a 10. So it's not possible for her to get a 10, but it's very possible for her to get really close. And you see there she has a 9.85 great score for Western Michigan. The strong vault performance for Western Michigan continuing after the freshman Josephine Thomas just excelled. Here's Rachel Dekovich for Kent State. I beg your, yes, it is Rachel Dekovich. Mm -hmm. She is a freshman for KSU. And to be a freshman competing in the all around is truly a feat. I Means she really has the skill, really has the difficulty. A beautiful release move. That is called a shaposh. 
You actually go backwards and reverse from the low bar to the high bar. Another double layout dismount and a beautiful stick. You saw her feet did not move there. That is the kind of routine that you want as fifth in the lineup. You'll see here this dismount again. Beautiful double layout, straight body, and her feet are glued to the mat. A lot of excitement there as that's our fifth routine in the rotation. And here we go for the anchor on vault, Carissa Ludwig. That was a Yurchenko half. So it doesn't do a full twist all the way around. She actually lands facing forward, which is quite difficult as it is a blind landing. You can't see the ground before you land. That might be why she had a bit of a giant step there at the end. The judges will definitely take a couple tenths there on the landing for taking a big step. But overall, great vault rotation for Western. They were very clean. Coach Penny certainly seems to be happy with it. Vault's always a great event to start on because it's a power event. There's not much room for error if you have a strong lineup. And so to nail all six of your vaults is definitely a great way to start a meet. One more to go on the bars for Kent State. And it's the outstanding competitor we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Jade Brown. Jade, the 4'11 senior, native Michigander from Lansing, coming back to her home state. Beautiful free hip hand. Right into a Tkachev. See her legs, little bit of separation there on that giant. Looking for a really strong finish. Another stick for the dismount. Another double layout. A little bit of bent knees on the landing. She had to take kind of a big step forward. So not the cleanest routine, but she made it through. And the most important thing is, Kent State now doesn't have to count that fall. They can count five solid routines and not have to worry about a fall or a low score contributing to their team score. Jade known for her Prowess on the floor exercise, tied for first of the MAC championships last year with her Kent State teammate, Abby Fletcher. Jade just competed on the bars. Western Michigan and Kent State going back and forth in the first rotation. Western Michigan done with their six on the vault. Kent State done with their six on the bars. Emily, for both teams, what did you make of the first rotation? I thought it was a great first rotation. Western Michigan definitely nailed all their vaults, which is what you want. And then Kent State also had a couple of sticks on their bar routines. They did have kind of a mishap in the fall on bars, but they recovered with Jade Brown's routine there at the end. So overall, great first start for these teams. They're gonna be switching events now. So Western Michigan will move to the bars. Kent State will come on over to the vault and we'll continue the power events here. Western Michigan and Kent State through one rotation here in Kalamazoo, Mac Gymnastics on a Sunday afternoon. Action, intense so far. More coming up from University Arena after the break. One rotation down, three to go here in Kalamazoo. Western Michigan preparing for their turn on the bars. Well, Kent State will flip to the vaults. Tight so far between Western Michigan and Kent State. Evan Stockton back alongside Emily Graham. Glad you're joining us on a Sunday afternoon. The last time these two met was a year ago, just about on March 1st, 2019. And Kent State won an extremely competitive meet. It's Western Michigan's second best total score of the year. But unfortunately, last year it was a loss to Kent State. Emily, it's a sports cliche, right? You want to bounce back from a loss to a program the year before. From your experience as a gymnast, what is that like going from losing to a team the year before, coming back the next year? Does that stick in your mind at all? Or is it just more, I want to do well individually? 
You know, honestly, in the MAC conference, every team is so competitive, and every team has a very similar skill set that it's not always about beating your rival. It's more about showing that you have the consistency to hit your routines and kind of just coming back and trying to do better than you did the year before, trying to earn a better team score, trying to get a higher event score. So while the rivalries are important and you always want to beat a, you know, a team that you lost to the year before, I think it's more important to remember trying to get higher scores and trying to just have a better overall meet. So here's the six that will compete for Western Michigan on the bars. Taylor Bice, the five foot four senior from Holland, a beautiful area of the state of Michigan. She's gonna lead it off. Charlotte Tishkoff will go after that, followed by Morgan Spence, Alexis Olivia, Amelia Moeller, and Stacy Harrison. Spence and Tishkoff are the all-arounders today for the Broncos. And for Kent State, as they prepare for the vault, Kendra Linway will lead it off, Abby Fletcher after that, Carly Franz, Olivia Amade, Rachel Dekovich, and Cami Klein. What do you make of that lineup, Emily? You know, that lineup is really interesting to me that they have three freshmen in the lineup. That means that this class that they brought in has talent that's going to carry them through probably the four years that they're on this team. So to start out with three freshmen in the lineup is a really great thing to have. Kent State comes in 40th in the NQS, the national qualifying score. Remember, you got to be top 36. Western Michigan comes in 39th. Really has been a strong season for Western Michigan. Yes. Taylor Weiss begins for the Broncos, Emily. Yep. Taylor this year has competed exclusively on the bars. This is her event. The crowd here on senior day prepares for Taylor, the senior, <laughs> to perform for the final time in a meet with Western Michigan. Remember, the MAC championships are here in Kalamazoo in a couple of weeks on the 21st, so it's probably not going to be the last time that Taylor competes here in University Arena. I actually had a very similar experience with that last year. Our senior meet and the MAC championships were at NIU last year, and it's kind of a surreal feeling to know that you actually get an extra chance as a senior to be in your home um, arena. It's interesting, Emily, you bring that up. Yesterday was senior day for the Western Michigan women's basketball team, and they actually lost, so they have another game here tomorrow, oh. so it's an interesting experience for them. Great, your Chanko full. Had a stick with a little bit of a wobble, but the fact is she did go for the stick. A little bit of pikey on the first, or on the landing there, but you know, like I said before, you really just want to start off with a strong ball at the beginning of your lineup, and that's what she was able to deliver. Kendra, the sophomore from just outside of Cleveland. Here's Taylor Bice. Beautiful handstand. Heading into her dismount here. A double layout. Almost to stick, a little bit of a hop there, but she nailed the first routine in the lineup. That's exactly what you want your leadoff to do. And obviously, she's a veteran on this event. She's a senior. She probably has a lot of confidence going in on this event. So I'm sure Western was pretty certain she was going to make that routine. Here's Abby Fletcher. Another year, Chango full. And I'm not sure if you can tell in the video there, but she actually got a lot of height off that table. And the judges can judge that. They can deduct for not having a lot of height. We'll watch it again here. She gets a huge lift off the table, almost a couple feet above the table there. Had to take a step on the landing, but the flashy should be pretty happy with that vault. Abby, the native of Ordell, New Jersey, which is only 21 miles from New York. We'd guesstimate how long it would take to get to the city, but uh, there's such a thing as traffic, so it's probably going to take a little bit longer than you think. Emily, you know that well now, living in the greater Chicago area. Oh, yes. Traffic is just a part of everyday life. Here's Charlotte Tishkoff getting ready to perform for Western Michigan. The five foot seven freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. She was third in the lineup in the vault for Western Michigan in the last rotation. Like we said before, it's amazing that a freshman gets into the lineup at this point in the season, shows she has confidence, shows she has strength, and that the team really trusts her. 
There's another Shaposh there. A little bit of leg separation, so the judges will deduct for that. Nice bail handstand. She goes gearing up for the dismount. Looking for a stick. Hop forward, so not a stick, but still a very clean routine. There's only a couple deductions there with the looseness in the legs. Charlotte's high this year on the bars is 9.775. That came in at Central Michigan last Friday. Here's Carly Franz, the freshman from Michigan. Great year, Chankoful. Another vault with a lot of height and a great landing. Very consistent vault lineup here. You can see she lands with her chest straight up and down, so the judges can't deduct for her being lower to the ground. A little hop backwards, which shows she has a little bit of over rotation, but she controlled it very well. Morgan Spence preparing for Western Michigan. One of the two all-arounders for the Broncos. She's been an all-arounder in each of the last five meets before today. She's an all-arounder again today, so make it six in a row. Beautiful handstand to start. That was a ginger there. It looked like she just let go a little bit too early and was too far away to the bar to come back to catch it. That's unfortunate. I know that's not what you want at this point in your lineup. And believe it or not, falling like that does not hurt despite the crowd's reaction. <laughs> Do you, do you know that from personal experience? I, I do, apologize I if I'm bringing up an old wound. <laughs> no, no. Um, release moves on bars, they do take a lot of practice, and with a lot of practice comes a lot of falling. And so, unfortunately, on these release moves, you just learn how to fall the right way. Here we go. Like we said, now she's just looking to finish off the routine with as minimal amount of deductions as possible. Oh no, another fall there on a blind full. She just seemed to twist a little bit too early on top of the bar. I know this is definitely not the routine she wanted. What's the mental challenge here, Emily, in a spot like this where the routine's not going as you'd like? I think the mental challenge is just getting yourself back up on the bar again. After two falls, you know, you're kind of wishing in your head that you had a do-over. You're wishing you could just start over, try again. Um, but now you just really have to mentally tell yourself, I got to get to this dismount. I got to finish the routine, and I have to try to shake this off after it's over. There she goes again. She made it that time into a double back, into a stick. So she was able to finish the routine on a clean note. However, the rest of Western Michigan's lineup's got to feel the pressure now. Good for Morgan to get back up and finish the routine, but obviously she'll be disappointed by that. Definitely. Olivia Amade, one of the two all-arounders for Kent State on the ball. What a beautiful vault. She actually had the most height that I've seen on vaults today. You'll see it here. She gets such a great rise after this block off the table. She goes straight up, a little bit of pike on the landing, a little bit of legs apart, but it was a clean landing. She was controlled, and the judges can tell when you're controlled. Olivia, the five foot two freshman from Chippewa Valley High School in Metro Detroit. Her best score on the vault this year, a 9.8. She's done that twice. Let's see if she can do it a third time. She actually improved on that score, 9.825. Congratulations to Olivia. There's the score for Olivia, officially. Got confirmation. Alexis Olivia is about to go up for Western Michigan, the 5'6 junior from Cornelius, North Carolina. 
Emily, while we have a moment, I just have to say, Stacy's mom, the song was just playing before. A missed opportunity. Stacy Harrison's a couple more down <laughs> in the rotation for Western Michigan. Wow, you're really in tune here with the songs. I can't keep track of it all. We got Take Me Home Tonight in the background. <laughs> Certain people notice certain things. I guess I noticed the music. Yeah, I wish I did. I, I just have... Really? When you were competing, you didn't really notice? You know, when you are in the zone like this, you don't hear anything. <laughs> I, I remember competing up on the beam, and you can you would think that you'd be able to hear a lot of things to distract you while you're up on the beam, but you cannot hear anything. You are so zoned in on what you're doing. You're so zoned in on your skills and trying to perfect them that you really don't hear anything going on in the background. Okay, here goes Alexis. Nice free hip hand. She'll go right into a ganger there. Beautiful height. Hitting these handstands is essential in these routines. Handstands are the big killer for a lot of gymnasts. If you don't hit those, the judges can automatically dock you. A blindfold double back. Great, very clean routine. You didn't see many leg separation. You didn't see anything bent. Great height on the ginger. That's exactly what the Broncos needed after that fall, or two falls from the routine before. Yeah, you mentioned the pressure on Western Michigan because of the couple of falls for Morgan Spence. Well, Alexis just passed test number one. Still two more to go. Yes, she did. It's always a good feeling being that next hit. Another year Chango full, a very consistent skill lineup for Kent State. Another great vault, all very clean as well. You can tell they spend a lot of time practicing the details. Not quite the height we saw on the vault before, but still a overall great lineup so far for the flashes. Rachel Dekovich continuing to the strong rotation on the vault. Amelia Moeller, the senior from Tinley Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, on her senior meet here in Kalamazoo. We talked about Amelia at the top of the broadcast, preparing with a great big smile on her face. Here she goes. Gearing up for a release move, another ginger. Beautifully executed. And that's another unique release move you don't often see in the NCAA. It's called a straddle back. You actually go backwards onto the low bar. Double layout. A step backwards, but another clean routine that the Broncos needed. She was able to deliver. Amelia's high this year on the bars, 9.9 .9 at Illinois back on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And 9.9, if you really think about it, is such an impressive score to get in the NCAA with so much room for error and so much room for deductions. Another beautiful Yurchenko full. She did try to go for the stick there. You saw her really bend her knees, try to squat and squeeze it, but a, kind of a step backwards there, so she, they'll have to deduct there. Cammy Klein, the sophomore, five foot five from Zionsville, Indiana, which is outside Indianapolis. See it again here. You'll see her really try to squeeze and stick the landing. Overall, another solid Yurchenko pull. Here's Stacy Harrison to round out the rotation on bars for Western Michigan. Morgan Spence had a couple of falls earlier in the rotation. So Western Michigan, as you mentioned, Emily, the, the pressure was on them. And so far, they've avoided. But one more to come here with Stacy. And look for some height on this release move. Beautiful. She actually connected it right to a bail, which means a couple extra bonus tents there. They're really going to want to stick on this routine as their anchor. A hot board, but such a great disc drop. That's actually a double layout with a full twist. So she made it that much harder for herself, adding a whole nother 360 degrees in there. Overall, just like Kent State, they do not have to count the fall on bars earlier in the rotation. So it's going to be a great event score for the Broncos.
Stacy hugs her coach. Penny Jernigan after completing the rotation on the bars for Western Michigan. Kent State done with their rotation on the vault as well. We're going to beam and floor after the first rotations complete. Senior meet here in Kalamazoo. Kent State and Western Michigan. The MAC Gymnastics meet on a sunny Sunday afternoon in Kalamazoo. Western Michigan and Kent State have completed the first two rotations. Kent State just took their turn on the vault. Western Michigan just took its turn on the bars. We go to rotation three, up next. Like John Bon Jovi once sang, we are halfway there. Two rotations complete, two more to go. Western Michigan and Kent State. In this meet, the senior meet for Western Michigan on a Sunday afternoon in Kalamazoo. Back alongside Emily Graham, Evan Stockton, with the rest of our crew. Glad you're joining us wherever you're watching, however you're watching. Glad you're carving out some time for us on a Sunday afternoon. Western Michigan and Kent State after the first two rotations. It's pretty tight so far, Emily. It is. You know, there is a little bit of separation there, um, a little less than a point, but you do have to remember that these next two events really do kind of take a toll on that team score. You have beam, which is obviously an event that's very prone to mistakes, prone to falling, and you have floor, which is kind of the exact opposite. It's more of an event to show your power, show your skill, and to be able to nail everything. While you can fall on floor, it is a lot harder, especially with seasoned gymnasts like this who have practiced and trained these skills for years and years, basically their whole lives, you know. The comparison between the two events really does, you, do, you don't actually know how the meet is going to end until you get through these two events. Emily, you and I were talking off the air before the broadcast. In your experience, obviously, as a former gymnast in Northern Illinois, you began, what, three, four, five years old in your gymnastics training? Yes, I was about three years old. My mom put me in gymnastics classes because I was too clumsy. Mm. Um, turns out gymnastics didn't really help with that. It actually helped me learn how to fall better or be a little bit more clumsy. But, yes, I did start at three years old and fell in love with the sport and so here I am today fully through it all the way through college it was the greatest decision I ever made it was the it was a huge part of my life and made me who I am today so I'm very thankful for the sport of gymnastics. Kent State's rotation on the floor McCarty, Amade, one of their all-arounders, Franz, Jakovic, Fletcher and Jade Brown will round out the rotation on the floor remember Jade Brown tied for first in the MAC championships last year on the floor with Abby Fletcher, who we'll also see as part of the rotation for Kent State. Here's the Broncos on the beam. Spence, Tishkoff, Ronnie Binstock, the freshman, we'll see for the first time today. Josephine Thomas we saw earlier today in the rotation for Western Michigan. She competed on the vault. Amanda Gruber and Amelia Moeller will round it out. It's nice to see that lineup again full of freshmen. Uh, you know, talking to Coach Penny, this has been their strongest freshman class she said she's ever seen in 25 years. Oh. They have six new freshmen, and five out of the six of them are competing, which is kind of unheard of, as freshmen usually take a little bit more time to adjust and get used to the college gymnastics environment. Um, one of their freshmen actually got hurt at the very beginning of the season, so to have five out of five freshmen who are fully healthy competing in this event and in this lineup is awesome. Usually college gymnastics does not take off to college basketball where we see freshmen all the time come in and excel early in their careers and often leave after one year. <laughs> As you're saying it's different but for Western Michigan, heck this has got to be a really encouraging sign that you're doing so well this year. You're so competitive. You're 39th in the NQS just outside of that top 36 and hey more good things are coming in the future because you got so much experience this year. Exactly. I mean, these freshmen, you got to remember, they're here for four years. So they have four more years to improve, get better, and continue to rock on this Western Michigan team. Morgan Spence begins on the beam for the Broncos. Gearing up for her series here. Flip-flop layout, step out. Beautiful, very clean, no wobbles to be found there. Oh, 
Another beautiful jump pass, no wobbles. Something to note here on the beam is judges really do look and really, really do deduct on leap execution. So gymnasts really have to work hard on making sure they have 180 degree splits, perfectly straight legs, perfectly pointed toes. What a great routine to start out for the Western Michigan Broncos. Especially as a leadoff and on beam, which is a more nerve wracking event, you wanna start with a solid stick to give the rest of your lineup the confidence. And remember too, Morgan Spence in the last rotation for the Broncos had a couple of falls on bar. So very encouraging to see her do so well in her routine on the beam. Probably feels very redeemed after that routine. Here's Sarah McCarty, the senior, five foot four from outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, starting on the floor for the flashes. A beautiful double back. She actually did a punch front into that. So it's double salto pass. A couple extra bonus tents in there. She's an interesting dance. Telling a little bit of a story here. Watch out for these leaps. Great combo. She has a bit of a unique routine in the fact that it's a little slower and the less, you know, dancey. She's really being dramatic about her dance. Second pass, double pike. She did land a little bit short, had to take a step forward. So the judges will have to deduct there. Overall, could have been a little bit cleaner on the landings, but she made the routine. Here's the second and final pass for Sarah. See her chest is just down a little bit. Her knees are bent. She kind of had to land on her toes. Probably felt that jolt a little bit in her ankles there. But the important thing is she stepped forward, was able to save it, and finished the routine. Charlotte Tishkoff, one of the two all-arounders, along with Morgan Spence, the freshman on the beam for the Broncos. Great series. Flip up, layout, step out. See that 180 split there. Another split three quarter. Very clean full turn. Full turns are one of those skills that look really easy, but they often cause a lot of damage in your brain when you're trying to do them because you think, oh, it should be so easy for me to stick it. Beautiful aerial acro. Dismount here, flip-flop, one and a half twist. A little bit of bent knees on the landing there. Overall, on beam, I always say a hit routine is a win because it is just an event, it's such a mental game. You know, I'm sure these girls, they do routine after routine after routine in the gym, sticking and sticking and sticking, but in the meet, those nerves can really get to you. And if you don't stay calm and stay confident in your skills, it can be the event that's the trickiest to stay on top of. Charlotte gets to complete her routine on the beam, take a breath. We'll see her coming up on the floor exercise as well for Western Michigan. Here's Olivia Amade competing once again, the freshman for Kent State who's competed in every single event for Kent State this year in the all-around. called a Rudy. She'll get a lot of bonus for that pass. A 
this point in the routine, you're really just trying to breathe. Switch your mindset to your next pass. Double back. Her feet got a little bit in front of her there, so she had to take a big step backwards. But you'll notice she only had two tumbling passes in that routine, and that was because she had an immense amount of bonus in that first pass that allowed her to not even have to do a second pass, which ultimately means less room for error, less room for deduction. Olivia's best score this year in the floor exercise at 9.8. We'll see where she scores today. First time we see Ronnie Binstock, the freshman from Severna Park, Maryland, which is 20 miles from Baltimore. She went to Severna Park High School where the majority owner of the Baltimore Ravens, Steve Bishotti, went. Another great series. You can tell they've really put the time in to making sure their series are solid. Great full turn, no wobbles from her there. Has a switch half. Very hard to do on the beam, turning halfway while also switching your legs in the air. Dismount, round off one and a half. Very clean landing, just had to take a small hop. Like I said, one and a half are a blind landing, so you can't always see where you're at. You can't always see the floor, so they're very difficult to stick. Ronnie just competed on the beam for only the second time this season. And she nailed it. You never would have known that it was just her <laughs> second time. She looked beautiful up there. Here's Carly Franz for Kent State. A very unique pass. That is an Arabian double front. She actually jumps backwards like she's going to do a backflip, and in the air, she twists and flips forward two times. Definitely having fun out there. See her teammates dancing with her in the background. She goes for the next pass. A great Rudy into a back layout step out. It's very impressive to see a gymnast end with a back layout step out after a pass. You have so much momentum going into the pass to then finish it with this beautiful and elegant back layout step out is impressive. Here's that double Arabian we were talking about before. See, she flips backwards, half twist, double front, and just about sticks it there. You can see how proud she is of that when she lands. After Carly's outstanding routine, here's Josephine Thomas, the freshman for Western Michigan. Saw her earlier on the vault. She was fifth in the rotation. Beautiful. Flip flop layout step out again. Very clean. All their landings have been very solid. Great front aerial. Did great splits there. Both of those hit 180. Dismount here. Aerial, full, almost a stick. She really fought for it. But that is such a hard dismount to do an acro skill off of the beam. Great routine again for Josephine Thomas. Her season high 
on the beam. 9.8, she's done that a couple of times. The last time was at Central Michigan last Friday night. That'll be another great score for her. Rachel Dekovich, the freshman from Champion, Ohio. You gotta be good at something if you're from Champion, Ohio. She's <laughs> on the floor. She's actually following a 9.9 .9 routine from Carly. Franz competed before her. Another Arabian double front. You really don't often see that. So it's great to have two girls in a row compete that skill. I'm sure they train that a lot together. She's having fun out there. Stick on the loop pass. Some very fun choreography here. Definitely keeps the crowd, the team, everyone engaged in the routine, especially the judges. You want the judges to look at your routine and think, wow, that was fun. You know, you want them to enjoy it too. Punch front, round off foot flop, double back. Some extra bonus in there, starting with the punch front. She did have her chest down slightly on the landing, so the judges will deduct there. Another two pass routine, meaning she has so much bonus and so much difficulty in both of those passes, she doesn't even need a third. Overall, another solid routine for the flashes on floor. And the two remaining in the rotation on the floor for Kent State are Abby Fletcher and Jade Brown, who were tied for first at the MAC Championships on the floor last year. So more fun is still to come. Absolutely. Here's Amanda Gruber, the freshman for Western Michigan. Flip flop, layout, step out. Very solid once again. Another switch half there. It's always good to see girls smile up on the beam. It's an event where sometimes you're so much in the zone, you forget what your face looks like. It might look like you're terrified even though you're nailing it. She seems to have a smile, which is a good sign. Dismount, round off one and a half, step forward, but another solid routine. That is five for five for the Western Michigan Broncos on beam, which means for Jade, I mean, excuse me, Amelia Moeller on the beam, she's gonna have such a great time up there knowing they've already got five solid scores in the bank, so she can just go up there and nail it how she usually does. Everyone's celebrating with Amanda, the freshman from outside of Chicago. Here's Abby Fletcher for Kent State. It is a double layout and it's beautiful. You see a lot of girls do double backs and double pikes, but to actually be able to do a fully laid out position, two back flips in a row is an amazing skill. It's got some great Gatsby floor music here. Last pass here. Two front folds in a row. You see her line is slight, or her foot is slightly over the line, which means she will get a deduction for going out of bounds. You could see a little bit of the disappointment at the end for Abby there too. Yes. Going out of bounds. Going out of bounds is a tenth that's very frustrating because. It's not like you did anything wrong in your skills, but you still get a deduction for just not staying in bounds on the floor. So it's a tenth that is very hard to take in. As you said, Emily, pressure's off here, sort of, for Amelia Moeller because the first <laughs> five are clean on the beam for the Broncos. She rounds it out. Exactly. 
but it also gives her the motivation to do the best that she possibly can to overtake still one of the higher scores in the lineup. Great series. That's a different one that we've seen. So that's a triple series. You do three skills in a row. She had flip-flop, flip-flop, layout, step out. Gives you a little extra bonus there. Something that a lot of people don't know is on beam, you do need to have a sideways element, whether that is a cartwheel or a really hard acro skill going sideways. You saw her do a cartwheel there down onto her knee. That's actually a requirement on beam. If she did not have a sideways element, she'd get a deduction. Great back pike off the end of the beam. That was an extremely solid lineup for the Broncos on beam. You'll see that dismount again. And right to the stick. Feet didn't move. You can see that big smile, big present. Super happy for her. That's the last time she'll perform for Western Michigan on her senior meet. Amelia is not part of the floor routine for Western Michigan, so part of the reason why she had such a great big smile. Here's Jade Brown to round it out for Kent State along with her teammate Abby Fletcher tied for first at the MAC Championships last year on the floor. You're going to see some big skills here, a lot of power. A double pike almost to a stick. She purposefully had to take a step back just because she was, she stuck the skill. Great leaps, both hitting 180. Front layout into a Rudy, very clean. Her feet looked a little bit apart in the middle of that Rudy there. See some fun dance moves from her. She goes gearing up for her last pass. Ends with a double back. Knees were a bit bent on the landing there, but a very clean routine. You can see why she's the anchor. Very strong, very powerful, fun dance. Overall, that's what you want on your anchor for floor. Here's that first pass again. Double pike, she's very open body, which shows the judges she's very in control. She knows exactly where her body is. And that finishing double back. Kind of had to slide backwards a little bit on the landing, but overall, great routine. Jade finishes on the floor. Just the beam to go for the golden flashes. Floor, of course, for Western Michigan in the final rotation. We do have some exhibitions that were scheduled before the meet today. However, they did not happen on the vault and bars, so we'll see if they still happen on the beam or the floor. There were a couple scheduled. On, on the beam for Kent State, Emily Kelly was scheduled to be an exhibition on the beam, and Ariana Ariana was supposed to go for Western Michigan. Western Michigan, after their six on the beam, Kent State the six on the floor, we came in pretty tight. Emily, what'd you make of both those rotations for Kent State and Western Michigan? Great rotations, especially for Western Michigan on the beam. They had such a solid lineup. No huge wobbles, no big mistakes, no falls whatsoever. So for them, I'm sure that was a great rotation for them to get beam kind of over with and move to floor where you know they can use their power and their strength to get some really big scores. And then for Kent State on the other side, they had some really unique passes. Um, a lot of two-pass routines, which means they have a lot of difficulty. So they are very strong on floor, as you can see. Here's Ariana Mamelica. She's the exhibition for Western Michigan on the beam.
Great job that she was able to save that there. Kind of had a big wobble on her series. Saw her foot slip off, but thankfully she was able to save it. Nice aerial into a split jump. She's looking to make the rest of this routine as clean as possible. Emily, when you're competing in an exhibition like this, what's your mindset or someone who wasn't part of the original six schedule? Being in an exhibition spot is actually really rewarding. It shows you that your coach has confidence in you to be able to hit a routine. And it also helps you build confidence in yourself as you're able to get out there, face the nerves, face the judges, and see what kind of score you can get. So the exhibition spot is really important for a team to push them forward, to get deep into the lineups. And, you know, unfortunately, there are injuries in this sport. So if an injury were to happen, you know that if you're in an exhibition spot, you can have the confidence to get up there, get into the actual lineup, and know you can hit a routine, no fear. Western Michigan and Kent State through three rotations. One more to go. Western Michigan will be on the floor, and Kent State will be on the beam after the break. Just one rotation left on this Sunday meet between Kent State and Western Michigan. It's the senior meet for Western Michigan, and they need a little bit more work to come out with a victory on this Sunday. the final rotation on Western Michigan senior meet. As you can see, Kent State with a slim lead on the Broncos after the third rotation. Broncos just took their turn on the beam. Kent State took their turn on the floor. Golden Flash is getting ready on the beam. While Western Michigan prepares to round out the day on the floor. Kent State, the six that just competed on the floor, there's their scores. The lowest one was dropped, and it's pretty good when you can drop a 9.8, Emily. Absolutely. Like I said before the break, to have such a solid floor lineup with so much difficulty means you're going to get rewarded with those high scores. So for them to have to drop, what, a 9.8 is pretty impressive. Very impressive what we just saw on the floor exercise for Kent State. As for the Broncos on the beam, they dropped the lowest score of Amelia Moeller, the last to compete at 9.6. What did you think of the Broncos during their turn on the beam? I thought they had such a solid lineup. You did not see many big bobbles, only small little deductions here and there, which is why you see, like I said, a very consistent 9.7 score for basically their entire lineup. So that you can tell they're definitely very strong on beam. They have a lot of consistency. Just need to clean up a little bit of feet here and there to make sure they get those higher 9.8, 9.9 scores. So what do you think Western Michigan's mindset is going to be going into their floor exercise? Of course, Kent State on the beam here. Samantha Henry will lead it off. Olivia Amade, one of their all-arounders, followed by Cami Klein, Rachel Dekovich, Riley Danielson, Abby Fletcher. What is the mindset of both teams as we enter this final rotation with Kent State holding that small advantage? Absolutely. For Kent State, you know, going into beam on your last event, that's always a nerve-wracking thing. So for them, all they're really thinking about is making sure they hit their clean, consistent routines. If they do that and hit all six, they really shouldn't have a problem taking this uh, meet for the win today. And on the other side, Western Michigan, they need every tenth they can get to try to catch up and to try to pass Kent State. So for their floor routines today, they're going to need to have clean landings, great tumbling, lots of power, amazing leaps. So for them, they're really looking to have solid routines, no mistakes, and they're probably going to be wishing Kent State makes a few on beam. So we'll just have to wait and see how this floor lineup turns out. Just saw the six going on the floor for Western Michigan. Spence, Thomas Binstock, Harrison Tishkoff, and Ludwig. Carissa rounds out the six for Western Michigan. It's the senior meet for the Broncos. Lost last year to Kent State, trying to bounce back and win today. The MAC Championships will be here in Kalamazoo in a couple of weeks on the 21st, so this is not the last time we'll see gymnastics here inside University Arena this year. No, it is not. The MAC championships are coming up, and it's always such an exciting meet because every team, like I said before, is so evenly matched, and anybody could take it on any given day. So the MAC championships is always a really exciting and great meet to watch. Here's Samantha Henry, the sophomore from Chocolate Town, Hershey, Pennsylvania. See a front toss there. It's a very unique skill in the fact you do a front flip off one foot.
for series. Still can't play that step out. Very solid. No wobbles there. You see, she's a little bit shaky up there. Being the first girl up is always nerve wracking. Your team's really counting on you to start them off strong. So far, she's stayed on the beam. A gainer full to a stick off the side of the beam. That's a great dismount to end with. What did you think of the overall performance, Emily? I do think it could have been a little bit cleaner. She had a big wobble on her front toss and a little bit wobble on her jumps. So definitely could have been cleaner, but she stayed on the beam. Like I said, staying on the beam is a win in my book. Here's Morgan Spence on the floor for Western Michigan. The all-arounder beginning the final rotation for the home team. A beautiful double pike. She had a lot of height on that. We said before, Western Michigan's looking for minimal mistakes, minimal deductions. They're gonna need every tenth they can get. That was a front one and a half or a Rudy. And a lot of the times you'll see gymnasts do some kind of jump or leap out of a pass to kind of save the landing a little bit. If she was off on her Rudy and was gonna have an odd landing, a jump kind of saves her, helps her get more control and land the pass much better than she normally would have. Fun dance here. That was a back one and a half to a punch layout. Definitely some bonus there by connecting those two skills. Very clean routine. Morgan's high on the floor exercise this year 9.825. She's done that twice. We shall see if it equals or beats that score when the judges come out with their ruling of Morgan's performance. As we switch back over to the beam for Kent State, Olivia Amade, one of their all-arounders competing for the final time today. Olivia's best score this year on the beam is a 9.8. Last time she did that was in Kent State's quad meet last Friday. She'll be looking for a routine that's very clean, very solid, especially with the routine before having a little bit of wobbles, maybe not getting the highest score they possibly want. This routine is really going to count. Those details and those deductions need to be minimal. Morgan Spence did just equal her season high score of 9.825. She's done that three times now this season. Which means I'm sure she's gunning to try to get a higher score the next couple of meets. Western Michigan, after today's meet with Kent State, goes to Iowa next week. I'll be right back. That meet will be on Friday. Olivia on the beam. Definitely and off the beam. not what she wanted there. She just seemed to land with her hips a little bit turned sideways on that. Um, layout step out, which caused her to fall off the beam. So unfortunately for Kent State, that puts on the pressure for the rest of the lineup. Especially with such a razor thin margin. Exactly. Uh, Especially after a fall like that, you do feel a little shaken up. You can see she's a little bit wobbly on the rest of her skills. She'll want to finish this routine with the least amount of deductions. A punch front full off the end of the beam. So definitely not the routine that Kent State wanted. They have to do be absolutely perfect for the rest of this lineup so they do not have to count that fall. So now Western Michigan has a little bit of an opening. Can they push the door open? Here's Josephine Thomas. A double pike. She did land a little bit squatty. Her knees were kind of bent. She kind of had to use those muscles to get herself back up, make sure she didn't sit down on her butt. 
There's a front layout, front full. Another landing not quite very clean. These leaps are going to need to be perfect. They were beautiful. Now this last pass here, she's going to want the cleanest landing she can do, considering the other two were a little bit sloppy. That was a round off whip back one and a half. And the whip back's unique to the fact that you do not put your hands on the ground. So you do two skills back to back with no hands. Josephine's time on the floor complete. The accounting major who was born in Seoul, South Korea, but she comes to Kalamazoo from Adamstown, Maryland. Overall, could have been a bit cleaner on her landings there, but she made the routine another solid lineup spot. Very clean flip-flop layout step out. Cammy Klein, the sophomore from outside Indianapolis, the one on the beam now for Kent State. She's got the pressure on her as she's following a fall. Beautiful side aerial, no wobbles there. Another gainer, full dismount off the side to a stick. Definitely what the Golden Flash is needed after that fall from Olivia. Do you think it is such a mental thing, Emily, that, hey, we had the fall on the last part of our rotation here on the beam, so it really was important just for the mental psyche of the remaining three flashes. Hey, we got to have a clean routine here. Absolutely. It definitely um, gets into your mental space, into your mental game, and you really have to try to tune out those external factors and really focus on what you know how to do. So after Josephine Thomas, the freshman for Western Michigan, just competed as we move on in the rotation for the floor exercise, we've got another freshman, Ronnie Binstock. There's another one of those beautiful back layout step outs. Came out of a Rudy. Really shows control and it gives her a really clean landing. The judges won't be able to deduct if she lands beautifully like that. good routine for Western Michigan. She had much cleaner landings. Looks like she was a little bit more prepared for the floor there. That should be a great score. Take a look here at that double pike again. Her chest was up. She could see the ground. Big smile. For that final pass, the crowd really could sense the moment, Emily. Yes, they were really excited for that. Ronnie delivered. Here's Rachel Dekovich, the freshman from Champion, Ohio, which is an hour from Cleveland. So flop layout step out had a little bit of a wobble. The flop foot came off of the beam. Crowd cheering behind us. They gave Ronnie Binstock a 9.9 .9 on the floor exercise. Great score for her. Finishing there with a little bit of a step backwards on her dismount. But Rachel Dekovich does stay on the beam. Keeps the golden flashes afloat. Ronnie 
just posted that 9.9, .9, a new season high, a new career high on the floor. Congratulations. That is a great feeling. You can see how happy she is with that there. That's hard work paying off. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can see, you could tell when you watch the routine back how clean her landings were and how well deserved that 9 9 was. So now, after Ronnie's outstanding routine, next up, Stacey Harrison. I could have done another flip under that one. Great middle pass. It's two forward-facing elements in a row. Front layout to a front pole. You can see the team doing all of her dance moves in the background. You practice these routines day in and day out, and pretty much through season, you memorize every single person's routine. Last pass. Ends with a double pipe. Great landing there. Her chest was up. She just about stuck it. Big smile on the landing there. That's exactly what the Broncos needed to continue this forward momentum through this floor rotation. What back-to-back -back outstanding performances from Binstock and now Stacy Harrison. See that double back super high. She had so much time to land. You could see she was fully prepared for the landing. She absorbed the floor. This is going to be a big score here. Riley Danielson, the next down the beam for Kent State, the sophomore from outside of Minneapolis. Lift up, layout, step out. A little bit of wobble there within her feet, but she kept control. Look at that score for Stacey Harrison. Wow. That is exactly what you want. That means she only had, you know, three quarters of a tenth taken away on that routine. If you think about how hard that is, she had to be almost nearly perfect in everything that she did to get that score. Well deserved. That is a new season high for Stacy, by the way, on the floor. Switch sleep, switch sleep. So far, a good routine, not much deduction. Remember, Kent State had a fall earlier on the beam, so every single performance the rest of the way is so important. A flip-flop, Leia step out to a full for her dismount. That's a first I've seen. She basically did her series on the beam, and then she did the same exact series off the beam. So she has so much difficulty packed into that one routine. She did stick it. Here you can see it again. Had a little bit of a wobble on the stick, but her feet didn't move. Golden flashes will take that. Here's Charlotte Tishkoff for Western Michigan. Second to last in the lineup on the floor. Western Michigan said two consecutive outstanding performances. Double pike. Had a shift backwards a little bit there in the landing. a punch layout. Great combination. She'll get some bonus there. And a clean landing. The choreography behind Charlotte is outstanding. You can't yes. help but notice. 
And you can tell she really enjoys performing it as well, showing it off, smiling throughout. Here's her last pass. A double back. Chest was a bit down, but she presented it very well. A great finish. Her two double back, double pike passes. Chest was a little bit down. The landings were a little bit off. It's not to say it wasn't a clean routine. The Western will be happy with that. The final one to compete coming up for Kent State after Charlotte's effort on the floor. It's Abby Fletcher, the five foot four junior from New Jersey. She's coming off her best performance of the season on the beam and Kent State's quad meet last Friday had a 9.825. Beautiful front aerial, very clean lines. The flop layout step out, she nailed it. You can tell how she moves on the beam. She's very confident in this routine. She sticks to skill and moves right through it, moves on through her routine. She'll be looking for a stick on this dismount coming up. See the team nervous for her. A front aerial to a front pull to a stick. And now you can tell after watching that beam routine why she is Kent State's anchor on beam. It was flawless, beautiful lines, very clean. And she had so much confidence up there. I mean, you can even tell when she stuck that front full, she knew she nailed that routine. It was absolutely awesome. Abby with the strong anchor for Kent State. Carissa Ludwig, the sophomore from Clarkston, Michigan, the anchor on the floor for Western Michigan. And now that Kent State doesn't have to count that fall on beam, Western's looking for every tenth they can get to catch the flashes with this last routine. No pressure, Carissa. <laughs> that is a front through to double back. A little stumbly on the landing there, but she does have lots of difficulty in that pass. Good leaps. Isn't that one fun? Deep breath for Carissa. Taking her last couple of breaths here before this pass. Double pike. Great landing. Fun ending with that W up in the air for Western. She seems excited about that routine. The last pass was very clean, great landing. So we'll just have to see how these scores turn out here. Great rotations for both teams. Looks like we are going to get an exhibition on the beam for Kent State. Emily Kelly will go for the Golden Flashes after their six complete on the beam. Emily, the senior from Countryside, Illinois. Grateful turn. Side aerial. Great job. No wobbles there. Another very unique dismount. She did almost like a hitch kick right into a 
front full. She did stick it. So another solid exhibition routine for Kent State. Obviously, won't be able to count towards the team score, but to know that you have an next girl up who's able to hit a routine is very comforting and um, great knowledge for the team to know going forward. Emily completes her exhibition on the beam. And now Western Michigan will have an exhibition on the floor. Sarah Shirley. Sarah the junior from Queen Creek, Arizona, which is 40 miles outside of Phoenix. Great double pike. Back one and a half to a punch front, clean landing. Some fun choreography here. Who do you think she was calling when she put the phone to her ear? <laughs> if it were me, I'd be calling my mom, but. We'll have to ask Sarah afterwards. <laughs> go for her last pass. She'll want a clean landing here. Double back, and it was a clean landing. A very good routine for her. A great exhibition for Western as well. Sarah with great big hugs throughout the Western Michigan lineup. Broncos and Kent State have completed all four rotations. The Broncos on their senior meet here in Kalamazoo will celebrate the seniors in just a few minutes. Sarah still celebrating her great routine. Western Michigan and Kent State, all four rotations complete. We come back to Kalamazoo and wrap up a Bronco victory on their senior meet against Kent State on this Sunday afternoon of Mac Gymnastics after this. Congratulations to Western Michigan. They win their senior meet. They came back extremely late in the final rotation. Western Michigan takes down Kent State on the benefit of some awesome routines on the floor. Evan Stockton back with Emily Graham. Glad you've joined us. Whether you've just joined us or you've been with us all afternoon long here from Kalamazoo. Emily, what'd you think? It was late here in the meet and Western Michigan benefited from some sloppy late from Kent State on the beam and Western Michigan took advantage on the floor of some Absolutely. great routines. Absolutely. Kent State had a solid lineup, but they were just a little bit less clean than Western Michigan. Western Michigan came out on floor. They knew they had a couple tents to make up and so for them to come back, put out some great routines, some great power skills, some great difficulty was awesome for them and allowed them to win the meet. You can see Kent State on the beam. They had to drop the lowest score, which Olivia Amade, one of their two all-arounders, had a tough performance. She was the one who fell off the beam that allowed Western Michigan that little bit of a crack that they pushed through on the exactly. floor. Exactly. As you're going to see the great scores Western Michigan had. Morgan Spence, Josephine Thomas, Ronnie Binstock, Stacey Harrison, Charlotte Tishkoff, and Ludwig, the anchor for Western Michigan, that was a winning combination. Absolutely. And I mean, you look at those scores, you see, you don't even see a 9-7. And that's exactly what you want from your team going forward, especially as the MAC championships are approaching. You want those scores to be 9-8 or higher. You want them to be pushing the limits of what they can do. And that's exactly what you did. They saw two 9-9s in there, which is absolutely great for a floor lineup. The Western Michigan seniors on their senior meet watching a pre-produced video on the Jumbotron. Emily, in a moment like this, what were you thinking about? You know, I really was just so thankful for the sport and thankful for the time that I got to be on NIE's team. It's kind of a surreal moment thinking, you know, after college, you don't really get this chance to do gymnastics again unless, you know, you go into coaching or another avenue that way. But, you know, there really is no professional gymnastics. And so this senior meet is really something to be super proud of. It's a great way to just celebrate all of your accomplishments throughout your entire time as a gymnast. You can see tears all around because it's just such an emotional moment to be done with something you've done your whole life. 
Emily Graham, the former NIU gymnast, just last year reminiscing on some of the memories that Western Michigan gymnasts are going to have for the rest of their lives here as they go through the end of their senior meet. It was a successful, victorious senior meet for Western Michigan. They beat Kent State with a fantastic rotation on the floor in the very last rotation of the day here in Kalamazoo. For Emily Graham and the rest of our Bronco Productions crew working overtime here in Kalamazoo on a Sunday afternoon. Evan Stockton saying so long from University Arena where Western Michigan beats Kent State in an afternoon of Mac Gymnastics. All events streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend.